with Carryology, and I'm here to talk about camera bags. There's so many camera bags around here. Like we're gonna talk like there's like one here and there's another one here and there's like eight under the table. There's five over there, there's six over there. I don't even know how I'm gonna get out of this position, but it's gonna be fun. And we're gonna talk about all of them in some detail. Um, we don't have enough time here to talk about all of them in great detail, but we are gonna get into each one and I'm gonna give you a couple of recommendations on the camera bags I really like and the ones I use normally. Now, my normal type of photography, I don't tend to carry a big real camera bag. I tend to carry one of these. Something like this. This is the GORUCK GR2 26 liter in this multi-cam black. This is not a camera bag, obviously, but for me personally, I tend to like this type of bag for, for my normal camera carry, and I'll tell you a little bit why. So this bag comes in at 26 liters and it's just big enough for everything I need. And it has one thing that I think works really well for, for my normal camera situation or camera carry. It has a clamshell opening, so it opens fully like this. Now it opens from the front, which is the opposite of most camera bags which open from the back, but I think this works okay for me. I tend to go like this. I have my camera bag open and I work out of it as the day goes on. I don't tend to grab out of the side. If I'm gonna take photos, my camera's around my neck. In here I have a camera cube. I put a camera cube in here. This is from Mission Workshop. It's part of one of the other bags we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but it works really well in this GR2 and this is kind of where I tend to stick it. So my camera stuff goes in here. I can stick something else up here if I want to. Laptop in the back and you're going. Now one thing I like about this particular bag for my carry is it also has this front compartment up here. All of these flat pockets in the GR2 tend to work really well for a camera bag and that's why I think this is one of the best like non-camera bag camera bags that there is. Nice pocket up here, you can stick all your stuff in. It's just a great bag, really nice one. And if I wanna use it for something like a little bit more, like if it's a little bit tight, um, they offer like these things. It's a padded camera cube, or no, sorry, it's a padded field pocket, and I can stick it onto the front here, and I'm rocking. But anyway, that's enough for the go ruck. That's like my normal, my normal camera setup. So now you've seen that, now that's out of the way, let's dive into some real camera bags. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're here to talk about camera bags. But before we start talking about camera bags, I just wanna show you a little bit about, well, how I carry a camera bag generally. This is normally what I carry and that's the truth. So basically um, I'm a street and documentary photographer. I use very small cameras and normally I carry something that looks like this. Easy peasy, but there are jobs where I definitely need something a lot bigger and or a lot more comprehensive or something more akin to an actual camera bag. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. In the intro, I told you about how I use a GORUCK bag to, to use, you know, like as my normal daily carry camera bag or, or like when I have to go on a job, there's a GORUCK bag I use, the GR2, and it suits me just fine. But obviously that's not gonna work for everybody. And as we go, we're gonna talk about bags that hopefully might work for you. I picked some of my favorites. Now, when I say my favorites, I reached out to like a lot of brands and surprisingly they all got back to me and here we are with a ton of bags to talk about. So we're gonna do them in order, uh, small and then like medium, medium-ish, large, and then large. Without further ado, let's get into the small bags. So this is in fact probably my favorite camera bag there is. Of all the bags in this video, this is the one I've used the longest, the most. I have two of these, uh, one in this color, one in a camo colorway. This is the Ona Clifton. Um, there are no liter sizes, but this is the leather version in Cognac, 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 Cognac leather. And it is just a, a beautiful, beautiful bag to behold. It is very simple. It keeps this kind of day pack design. As we go uh, forward, I'm not gonna talk too much about the materials and everything because if I talk that much about every bag, we're gonna be here for like 10 days. This bag is obviously made of this beautiful leather. It will patina very nicely. This bag shines for me because it works as both a camera bag and a daily carry very well. And it also has some of the best camera cubes, period. I'm not gonna wax poetic about camera cubes this whole video, but I am gonna wax poetic about these camera cubes because I use them in almost every bag depending on what it is. The bag is very simple, so it has a pocket up here in the front, nice metal zippers, really nice liner. It is beautifully made. 
It has these bottle pockets on the side that really you can't put a bottle in, but they do gusset out. So if you put your wallet or something in there, it will gusset out and work fine. It's a very simple bag. There's some nice quality air mesh. I had some uh, worries that this wouldn't stand up to the rigors of my life, but actually uh, my other bag, which I use a lot more than this beautiful one, um, has stood up perfectly fine. Very basic grab handle. I believe this is built in the Dominican Republic, which is very interesting. The zipper is like very smooth. It's not a YKK, I believe it's a UCAN zipper. It's the first time I've ever heard of it, but it's this metal teeth, very lovely zipper. So the bag comes with these two camera cubes. The editor is going to kill me, but I'm going to tell you right now that this bag costs 519 US dollars. As we go, I'm not going to talk too much about prices because every bag kind of fluctuates a lot depending on like what camera cube or setup you have. But in the description below, you'll see the prices with the setups we have here in this video today. So the camera cubes are great. So one fits directly in the bottom here and one fits on the top and they are the exact shape of the bag. They have handles. There are very nice zippers. Uh, it opens like this and it fits cameras like a Leica or um, a Fujifilm or something like that very nicely. Now, this small guy is actually a little bit narrower here than this guy, which is a little bit deeper. So if you have a DSLR or something, you're more likely to use this. Even that will be kind of pushing it, but what I was saying is, is basically this camera cube can work for almost any bag. So famously, I've used it, well famously, <laughs> that's a joke, but I, I use this camera cube in almost every bag I have because it's just so nice and it works great. Uh, the bag itself has a 13 inch laptop sleeve in the back that's padded. Some very nice Ona branding right about there, if you can see it. It's a lovely, lovely bag. And uh, this will come back at the end of the video because it is my absolute personal favorite. And uh, I didn't lead off with it because of that, just because it's smaller. I would say this goat comes in at around 15 liters or so. Uh, there are no literages marked on the website, but that would be my guess. Moving along very quickly, we have this guy. Now this is a very interesting one because it's one of my other favorite camera cubes. This is the Peter McKinnon Cube Pack from Nomadic. Now what this is, uh, is a backpack slash camera cube. So you carry it like this. Uh, there is a nice zipper here. I believe it's a zoom zipper, not a YKK, but that's okay. Opens like so and you have all of these dividers. The dividers on this cube are beautiful. The, the nomadic dividers are just like the nicest. They're just so lovely. There's like a little um, Peter McKinnon thing here and uh, it's very cool. I believe this comes in at a, around $125, which is not bad considering what it is. So it's, it's that camera cube and it'll fit inside the bag. Um, so you can take it and then it has a party trick, which is it does this, like it becomes a, a whole bag. <laughs> and then you have a whole day pack up here. So what you can do with this is you can put like your jacket or whatever you're wearing up here. You connect these nice straps. They're actually slightly padded and your camera stays at the bottom here and you're just rocking. This is a very, very cool product and uh, I love it. I think Low Pro made a similar one, but uh, the Low Pro one, uh, I, my assumption would be is not as good a quality as this. This is, feels great, really well built. Honestly, I highly recommend it. And it's one of the bags in this video I use the absolute most. My video camera gear lives in here, including this guy. So actually that does it for the small bags. Let's uh, get into the medium bags. This is the first medium bag on the list. And this is from a camera company that is like super the camera bag company. This is from Tenba. My first ever camera bag was a Tenba bag like in 2008 or nine, and it had served me very, very well. This is their new Axis 2 bag. And it's called the Axis because it can be accessed. Let's see what that did there from a multiple points from multiple points. So you have this side access here with a couple of pockets. You have a uh, a waist belt here, which is still strapped in behind this thing because I never used it. Uh, some very nice padded back panel here. The straps are are nice. They're 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 nice. Good enough, I would say. They get out of the way really easily. There's some load lifters up here. Um, you can actually unzip this guy 
like so. This is a 20 liter bag and uh, it opens like this. Now this can carry tons and tons of your professional kind of camera gear. All of your gear sits here and it basically takes up the entire space in the bag. You have a one pocket over here. There's a number 10 YKK zipper that keeps it all in and that is kind of the whole I know, ethos of this bag. It's a camera bag through and through. A lot of the bags we're gonna talk about today are kind of like hybrid camera bags, I would call them, but this one is 100% a camera bag. There's also a front pocket up here, which you can use, it's a kind of admin panel. Um, I actually should have taken that out. There is an admin panel here, you can see uh, some decent mesh, it's kind of this plastic feeling mesh, it says Temba, uh, USA, it's the 20 liter version of this backpack, and a couple places to put your whatever things, comes with these straps in the front here, uh, this is for your tripod, a little like kind of tripod-y thing pops out of the bottom here where you can have your tripod put. If you go to the top, there's one AquaGuard zipper, one YKK AquaGuard zipper here, and this is a place where you can put your 14 inch, is what they say, uh, I believe. Computer, my 13 inch MacBook Air does fit in there, but it's it's a little bit tight, but it does fit no problemo. The top access here gets you into the top of the bag, but this is also where you'd probably put your camera to get it out quickly. Nice top handle. This bag comes in at $229, I believe. I just checked my notes, $260 is what this bag comes in in this multicam black finish. This is not 500D Cordura, which we're used to with multicam black. I'm not sure what the material is, but it's some type of nylon, and the bag is very cool. Stands up on its own very well. Temba, very nice. Oh, actually, last point, there is a very nice water bottle pocket here with a strap so you can keep things from dangling. The next one in this size is one that actually surprised me quite a bit. Now this is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic 25 liter like day pack. And when I got this, all of these Nomadic bags, because I had a Nomadic bag back in the day and I didn't love it. And I was kind of skeptical about these, but man, this bag actually performs really, really nicely. The straps are beefy and feel great. The whole build quality of this bag just feels absolutely top notch to me. It's just like the top handle, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just like padded and a very nice. The, the bag itself is very well thought out. There are water bottle pockets on the sides here that uh, magnets, magnets. And there are some uh, latching points here where you can latch things on this particular side. You can also see the laptop compartment, which sits here uh it is not it's maybe slightly suspended off the bottom actually and these are all zoom zippers nomadic like peak design which you'll see in a bit uses all zoom zippers let's get into the main compartment here so you can have a look i do like this i don't know if you can see that but there is a pirate guy there i think that's peter mckinnon's deal the youtuber when you open this bag up so it has all of these things. Now I have not been using this one because I don't need two, but I have been using this one and essentially my camera goes in here and uh, my battery and other stuff go here. I love this system because it, what you do is you end up with these guys, put it on your desk, so well, something like that. And then your camera can live in here. And then when you're ready to go, unzip this clamshell opening and go like this. There are the two pockets here. They're nice enough, mesh pockets. You can use them for meshy type things. The liner here feels amazing. It's like this cushy, very cool kind of luxury car vibe on this. Uh, one of the party tricks of this bag is the stair system. So you gotta go like that. And now the top part of this bag, which is kind of like your normal daily carry stuff, has a ton more space. So that's how I rolled with this bag, is I had my camera down in the bottom here like this. Kept the clamshell opening mostly closed unless I needed my camera. And then I use this top access here uh, as a kind of deep, like put my pouches in here and all that kind of stuff. There are two pockets along the edge of this thing here and uh, one more liner pocket up here where you can get in, nothing else going on on the inside there. But this bag was actually really nice to use. It's lacking a quick access pocket for me to love it. It needs something else where I can put my keys or something very quick. 
but unfortunately it doesn't have that. But otherwise, very cool bag. And uh, I'm gonna pop that. When you have like 15 bags, you kinda gotta stop the mess. So, oh, some more magnets here. These AquaGuard Zoom Zipper is actually very smooth. Looks like a number 10. Let's keep it rolling. So those, that's it for the medium, kind of medium sized bags. We're gonna get into the medium large now. Uh, these bags are pushing 30 liters. The last bag was 25 and then the previous Tembo was 20. So the first one we're gonna talk about is a an icon in this type of bag. This is the Peak Design 30 liter day pack. I once used the 20 liter day pack for a while and I liked it, but it was a bit tight for what I was using. The 30 liter day pack, it's got this like very cool like 400D recycled nylon. Um, it's, 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 I believe it's got 900D like kind of tarpaulin filling material down here on the bottom. It's a very cool bag. People love this bag for all kinds of reasons and they're all good reasons. It's, it's, it's hard to go wrong with the Peak, De Peak Design bag if you're a photographer. I will say for me personally, it's a little boxy and it kind of feels a little bit tight, but it's a very cool bag. Basically how this bag works is you go at your camera gear from the side here. Oh, there's another Peak Design in here. Also very cool is the six liter sling. I'll have more about that later. But you have these dividers that work like this and uh, you can flip them up, uh, arrange them how you want on this shelf system here and you can go in with your camera and take it out. Uh, what I find is that this is not the easiest for me in use because what I end up doing is uh, getting confused about where's what, which side, which is on. I'm sure if I use the bag long enough, that stuff would make sense to me. But with this particular bag, I end up getting frustrated with that uh, from time to time. Uh, there are pockets here with detail pockets on the inside, which I, I like. The, the mesh feels really good. I like this one because you can get at it from the top or the side. The other side is virtually identical. One of the party tricks of this bag is this very cool latch system. And if you can appreciate that. So it opens up like a top loading bag. You can see down into the chasm here. There's a magnet up here, magnets. And uh, inside there is nothing really but a nice stretchy pocket. This goes down into the main body of the bag. You could use it just as a day pack if you wanted to. There's no way to clamshell open this bag because there is a little kind of section here that holds it. As you go up this rung, you get to the 30 liter section, which is here. It's more like 20 something when you're down at the bottom. It doesn't really feel like a giant bag, but it's a, it's a nice one nonetheless. Uh, there are handles on three sides, which are cool. Also, these bottle pockets, which are probably some of the best bottle pockets there are. I'll be honest. They just feel great. Uh, they, they are just really, really nice. They hold everything I need and they stretch and they kind of bellow out and they're just really, really good. The only, 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 absolutely only issue I have with this bag, the, the absolutely only issue I have with this bag is the straps are not super comfortable for me. When I have it loaded out, I don't find it extremely comfortable. They're okay, like okay. Um, there are a lot of smart things going on here, like for example, uh, you can clip the straps down and they kind of stay here and then you can carry the bag in briefcase mode. Very cool, all those things are cool. They go on the swivel system, so they fit you depending on how you are, but they're a little bit, they're a little bit small. And honestly, I, I don't think it's a big deal, but they are, they're not my favorite. <laughs> Thing. I think if these straps were a little bit better, I would actually love this bag. There's a laptop compartment in the back here. Um, and the laptop compartment is great. It actually can raise and lower depending on the size of your laptop. It has some, I love these kind of taco pockets that sit in the front where you can put like your charger or whatever. It's, it's, a very, it's a very cool bag. Super well thought out, nice grab handles, all that stuff. Peak design, believe this one's around $300. Really good bag. Next one, this was one of the biggest surprises for me overall in this whole thing, the Shimoda Explore 30 V2. I used this bag um, and I, I had no idea, I didn't know much about the company and as I used it, I just loved it. There's no way I can talk about all the features of this bag in the amount of time I'm gonna have to talk. But what I will say is it is a very, very functional, cool camera bag. Whew, let's try to get into it. So there is a pocket up here on the front. It has this kind of teal lining, which is nice. I don't find the lining to be the most inspired. It's like a little bit 
thin to me, but the rest of the bag feels very well built. I believe that that liner is something that could be a little bit beefier to me, but I digress, it could probably make the bag heavier. One of my favorite touches about this bag are the zipper pulls. I don't know if you can see that. There are these like leather zipper pulls. Ian Miller, the guy who designed this bag, lives in Japan. I believe he's a Canadian that lives in Japan. And this sort of like leather pull on an outdoorsy bag is very Asian. I see it here in Korea. It's a thing that you'll see in Japan too. Uh, the pulls themselves will get a little bit of wabi-sabi or patina as it were. And that's very cool. Uh, Almost all the bags in this video will have straps you can attach like this. Uh, you'll see that on the websites. These ones attach like to multiple places. There are compression straps on the side here and more compression straps on the side here. Um, this bag, you get into the camera from the back. There's the number 10 YKK zipper here on the back. And uh, the camera cube is here. So the camera cube hides behind I mean, I have it kind of closed here because I wasn't using it too much because the camera cube is a little bit big for me, but plenty of space. The the padding and these, this cube, the I believe they call these the um, the core unit and the, the padding just feels unreal. It's so good. It's like thick and feels really like ugh, strong. Uh, it also comes with this kind of rain cover if you want to carry it as it were. The laptop compartment's here on the back the laptop compartment is kind of slightly afterthoughty, I believe. Uh, this one, even though it's a 30 liter bag, um, it I, I think it takes like, it takes my 13 inch laptop like just about, I believe it would take a 15 inch, but uh, as far as I know, the 25 liter version of this bag only takes a 13 inch laptop and that's a shame because I think the 25 liter would be great. The straps on this bag are super comfortable. They have these uh, two pockets here. One of them can take like your phone or like a mic and that kind of stuff. The other side here actually can take up to a water bottle, which is very cool. And uh, actually they even have these little like latching points inside where you can latch on a mic or something if that's kind of what's going. Uh, there are load lifters up here on the top and the load lifters uh, connect to the bag here. You can actually adjust the bag up and down. Uh, so like there's like a medium, large, small setting. This bag is so, so comfortable when you get it dialed in, like really, really nicely comfortable. Um, they even offer a uh, women's strap. So if you buy this, uh, if you're a lady and you buy this, then ask them for the women's straps. I believe they come as a free upgrade or a free, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the main zipper goes into the back here and it actually goes into the laptop compartment, which is cool. You can get into the main as well from there. Uh, and then there is a detailed pocket here that goes in. You can put like your charger or whatever in there. There's another pocket here that goes into this sort of like cube section. You can zip this whole thing out and just get into the main, but otherwise there are a couple of pockets inside here where you can keep your stuff. I would say there's like five to eight liters of space there. It's cool. All these zippers are lockable YKK zippers if you get the right kind of lock. And then there's one more kind of admin pocket here on the front where you have uh, two mesh guys and then uh, one more slip pocket and it goes all the way down to the bottom. A little bit of its own volume on that guy. Very cool. Uh, I will say, I believe that one of the things they did with this particular version of the bag is, uh, all right, all right. One side gets into the camera, and then the other side, what it does is gets into this, um, is this the side? Oh yeah, this is the side. It's like a filter pocket system. Now, I don't really carry filters, but you can get some pretty big filters in there and see through uh, what you're looking for. One of my favorite features of this bag are these water bottle pockets. So they pop out like this, and then they, this compression strap actually loops through the front here to keep it down, and you end up with these two super nice, very big water bottle pockets in a pinch. And when you don't need them, you jam them in here and they're gone. It's a very, very cool bag. There are tons and tons of things I could talk about on it, but I just don't have the time. What I will say is uh, I believe this bag comes in at around $290, $300. It's, it's one of my favorites that I've tested in a really, really long time. Camera bag, normal bag or not, just very cool. Um, Good job, Shimoda and Ian. Oh, last thing I forgot to mention, it has a grab handle, which is over here. 
and one here, and one on the bottom. And this is actually important, I should have mentioned it, because when you're carrying the camera bag from location to location with your camera gear exposed, the fridge kind of opening door can be open like this and you can actually just go here. That's super useful compared to having to like kind of figure out how you're gonna do that and just grab it like this. Really nice feature and uh, I'm glad I remembered while I was, I literally grabbed it like this and I remembered. I'm getting to the point now where I don't know where to put the bags that are surrounding me. This is going to be a doozy. So this is the Wotencraft Pilot 20 liter. It actually extends out to 30 liters with all the accessories that you can attach to this bag. Again, just like the Shimoda, I could do a whole video about this bag and uh, maybe I will. If there are any bags in this video that you really want to see a whole video about, let us know and possibly it could happen. Now, this bag is made of 500D waxed Cordura 6.6. 6.6 is actually the strongest type of 500D Cordura nylon, and this one is waxed. It's just a very cool, heritage-y kind of feeling bag with a lot of modern touches. There are these molly webbing things here because what you can actually do is after you unclip all of these things, you can have an attachment that goes here, which I have. Let's just see. There are like attachments galore for this bag. Like, you see this? Like, attachment, 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 attachment. Let's start with this one. So, this guy, they all attach with these very cool uh, Molly clips. This guy can attach here and then go under this part, and you end up with like. A packing cube on the front of your bag. These things are all very well thought out. Same material is just literally a packing cube, but very cool. I'm gonna put it back in the bag for now. This one, this is my favorite one because... So if you buy the camera cube, which is this, and you get this Part, I believe it's called like the rider bag, maybe? And it goes, it can attach to the bottom of this bag. And when it attaches to the bottom, it looks something like so. So when you're traveling, and then when you get where you're going, there's a nice uh, detailed zipper pocket, it's padded. You can stick this cube here. And you actually have a very cool, very nice camera bag with the strap, camera sling thing. And I've been using this as like my only camera bag for a while. Like my only little kind of walk around camera bag. It is just so functional and cool to use. I had to talk a lot about it. Um, for me, like even if I wasn't gonna get this bag, this is a killer product here. Very cool. The attachments work here. There's actually a handle. Wodencraft is amazing with the details. Like amazing. All the details are, are, are good. The last attachment is this guy. Now this guy will attach to the front of the bag here and you end up with something that looks like this. Uh, this is probably the one I would get if I was going with the bag, like the bag and this, it's the one that pairs the best. These clips will clip it on here. Essentially you end up with a pocket here and uh, when you open this guy up, you'll get a couple of liner pockets and a couple of zipper pockets. Uh, everything about Wotencraft build quality feels great. One thing I would say is I really wish they would use like um, Fidlock buckles for most of this stuff instead of the YKK buckles they're using here, but I digress. When it comes to the bag itself, it is accessed very similar to the Peak Design bag. So you open it up here and the, um, the dividers will go all across here and you can get your camera bag out, whatever. They are very specific in saying that this is not meant to be opened clamshell, even though you can unzip it the entire way. Uh, you have to use it very, very like that, that Peak Design bag, essentially. There is a 15-inch uh, laptop sleeve, which I'm told will fit a 16-inch laptop. That lives in the top of the bag here, right about there. A very nice detail. I don't know if you can you see that right there. 
The zippers are all YKK. They are probably like a number eight, it feels like. Uh, they're not super, super big. They are smooth. They run along the line very smoothly. One thing that annoys me about this bag is that when it's all done up, there's no quick access again. So I think this is kind of a theme. Like this bag is dying for just like a quick access up here. If it had a quick access up here, it might be like one of my favorite bags ever. The back panel is super comfortable. The straps are really nice. Uh, the hardware is all nice. The straps are, like I said, they're really nice. The water bottle pockets, also very good. They have a gusset down here on the bottom. Uh, there's also a little, um, like a, a drain hole so the water doesn't stay in. Just a really cool, cool overall bag. I would say, it's slightly fiddly to use. So like, when I was using it, I always found I was like, it's just like a couple too many buckles to undo and, and do for it to feel like really, I don't know, to, to make me feel really happy. What I ended up doing is using uh, the quick access over here, like uh, this, and then there's like these kind of mesh pockets, but they're only like that big, so that makes it a little bit hard to get into. It's a super, super cool bag. It's around, I believe, it is like $350 just for the bag. It's expensive, but the build quality is top notch. Probably one of the best build qualities in this whole video. Uh, made in Taiwan, but it's made by like, by hand with like small batches. And it's just a very cool, cool bag. Uh, I didn't, forgot this earlier, but there is a side handle here that you can hold on to. A very nice handle, it stands up on its own really well. This Wotencraft bag is great. Wotencraft gear in general is just really, really nice. Um, all I'll say is that it's slightly fiddly to use this particular one, but still one of our favorites at Carryology and one of my personal favorites too. Really cool bag, really nice, and definitely a looker. I'm gonna pack this up. Are you still here? Let's get this sucker in, yeah. I. I'm not really sure how I'm going to talk about this because it's, it's not available yet. But this is the new Errant Pro from Boundary Supply. And it is a really nice bag. It's in VX21 X Pack here in gray. Boundary Supply is not a bag I've used a lot. So I'm not like super familiar with Boundary Supply and, and what they've done in the past and, and what they're um, doing in the future. I, I will say that I did use this bag kind of extensively because I had some time with it. And it was, it was really, really nice. I would say that this comes in uh, around 25-ish liters and can expand up to like 30. Uh, you get the kind of flap top up here and uh, it will extend nice fidlock buckles. Nice fidlock buckles here to get into this sort of, uh, it's not really a roll top, flap top. In front of the flap top, you got a kind of a, detailed pocket that goes all the way down to the bottom here uh, with some Velcro. Uh, this is actually a, a nice place to, um, you can put, you can attach something to the front here, which I'll show you in a sec. What this bag does is it essentially takes the Errant bag, which is one of the bags they made, the Prima bag, which is one of the bags they made, and it combines them into one, which is this Errant Pro. It has a lot of features of both of those bags all combined into one, at least that's how I can figure. When I was using this bag, I found the straps to be really comfortable. These load lifters, I really wish they would do a little bit more. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's only like about this much space between where the load lifter, where the strap starts and the load lifter is. It doesn't do a whole, whole lot, but overall it was pretty comfortable. Uh, Boundary is like all about the technical stuff. Like you've got like magnetic sternum straps, which are not my favorite, but pretty good. Um, Hypalon everywhere. So this material, this kind of tarpaulin, Hypalon stuff is everywhere on the bag. It's pretty tough. I honestly kind of wish that the whole front was just this X-Pack. I know it doesn't go with the boundary supply look, but I think that would be kind of cool from my point of view. You have an attachment point down here where you can put like a bike light. You have these buckles where you can attach like, you know, something to the bottom of the bag. Uh, if you want to have like your tripod down there or maybe like a sleeping roll, I guess, if you're going to use it for sleepy kind of things. This is like the daily carry pocket, which I believe was on the first errand. It has uh, a couple of sleeve pockets inside and you can kind of organize your stuff in there. And then this is also the side access to the camera, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. The camera cube is in there. This VX21 makes it very cool. I like VX21. 
On this side, there is a stretchable water pocket. It's not quite as nice as the one on the Peak Design, I think, from my point of view, but it's 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 good enough, I would say. Uh, it doesn't, I don't know, it just kind of, the Peak Design one sort of just feels a little bit more, and the Wooten Craft one. This one kind of feels like, I'm not sure if this elastic will stay, you know, for a long period of time or if it's gonna get a bit wonky. It's already kind of permanently stretched, but it's okay, good enough for what, most people are going to use it for. Uh, the top part here, there is a kind of cool pocket. This came from the Prima, I believe. And uh, there is one pocket here. And then there's another magnet. Magnet. Magnet pocket back here, which is uh, this kind of nywool stuff, which is nice. And all of these zippers are AquaGuard. They're all YKK. Uh, they vary in sizes, but for the most part, they are, are you know, good good zippers uh boundary uses like their own sort of proprietary pulls i think like i would probably just use paracord if i was gonna redo this bag for my own personal use but very cool nonetheless on the side here i just noticed there are like these g-hook things that pop out i believe that was also on the errant originally on the back panel uh it goes through so you can pass through your luggage thingy and then over here there is a zipper that goes into a kind of secret concealed sort of pocket there, I guess for your passport or whatever. On the bottom here, there's a place that you can put the hip belt, which is inside the bag, I believe. This bag opens clamshell from the back, which is actually pretty good for camera bags. I, I like it when they do that because then you don't get the straps all dirty if you're out and about. Number 10 AquaGuard YKK zipper that is lockable and it opens like this. This side is where your tech stuff goes. So you end up with a couple of sleeve pockets here, a tablet pocket, and then up on top, you have your laptop sleeve, which is definitely uh, suspended off the bottom and good enough for a, a big laptop. I'm sure your 16 inch MacBook Pro will fit in there just fine. On this side, there's actually a kind of organizer panel that zips in here. And I believe there are gonna be accessories that zip into there. Uh, I don't have that, actually I might have it in here. Oh yeah, so it's inside the camera cube. So here it is. It actually just uh, zips out from here and you have a couple of zippered pockets if you want to use that for uh, your, you know, adding some organization here. I kind of like having the clamshell just open up like this. So that's probably how I would rock it. For the bag, that's pretty much it. But there is one more cool sort of party trick and that's this camera cube. And I think this is one of the coolest camera cubes I've seen in a very long time. So it opens up like a camera cube here. There's like a little tech pocket on the back here where you can put some organizing stuff. And then inside, I put the dividers here because, well, I don't use a lot of them. Inside, you'll see these straps. What are these straps for? Well, these straps attach to the bag like this <coughs> and like this. And what you end up with is a backpack that looks like so. Nice, really nice top handle up here. And yeah, they, they are actually very comfortable. It's a very cool kind of idea, similar to that Peter McKinnon idea. There is a zipper track on the front here. Now, one thing I would say is I don't really like these. I, I, I kind of wish these were gone because then you could actually even like use this almost like a clamshell opening bag without these things. You could, you could just kind of clamshell this sucker open and use it like a day pack and, and maybe just have a little camera divider down at the bottom. Um, these things are, are slightly confusing to me. I don't, I don't know if I would use them. I guess they serve a function um, that I am not seeing. I think what they actually probably do is maybe secure it into the bag, but uh, overall, uh, this is one of the coolest camera cubes uh, I've seen. Now, it's slightly big for my needs, like, I don't think, like, I have a camera that would fit in here per se, but uh, this is definitely, definitely worth a look. And I think as a set, this makes a really cool camera kit. The Boundary Supply Errant Pro. Coming to you soon. Nice bag. Um, it's a very, it's a, it, it's, it's a cool bag. It actually uh, carried a lot more than I thought it would. And uh, it was, it was comfortable. The one thing that kind of annoyed me is that it doesn't really like to stand up, like, 
you have to kind of pack it out perfectly for it to stand up otherwise it's definitely a leaner but not bad good job boundage spray the last of the medium sized bags is probably my favorite like pure like professional camera bag that there is and that is the mission workshop integer now the integer the mission workshop integer this is made in the USA. This particular version is 500D Cordura nylon. It is built beautifully, a really, really nice bag. Now we're getting into a bit of a different level here because this is like where bag nerdia and like camera stuff like meet. So you end up with like a, a lot of both of those things in this bag. Uh, a bag that is like just really well thought out and just really, really, really nice. Lifetime warranty for Mission Workshop. They'll take care of anything that happens for you. I mean, just just one of my favorites. And this is the one that I probably use the most of anything in here, aside from that Ona Clifton, because that's just smaller. But when I need something bigger, I always go with this. Now, the elephant in the room is that this Mission Workshop integer, co integer, this Mission Workshop integer costs around five hundred and seventy dollars. I'll let that sink in. The boundary supply just now, we don't have a price for yet, but I'm sure it's the shocking nonetheless. This cost $570, but honestly, you get the build quality of a bag that costs $570, so there's that. As you can see here, let's get into it. There's a roll top. The roll top allows you to expand how much stuff you put in the bag. Every zipper on this bag is a, an AquaGuard, a YKK USA zipper. Uh, you can see here there's a small detailed pocket in the front. There's a really cool Cobra buckle that fits on the front here when you want to go top down mode. The liner of this bag, the liner of this bag is completely waterproof. So no water is getting in. That's not something I could say for uh, many bags these days. Completely waterproof. You can get into the bag through the top here. You can get at your camera through the side here. It has this kind of side access. I very, very, very rarely use this side access, but I mean, it's there if you do need it. There's a really small pocket here if you want to put something small down in this section. This side has a tripod holder. Now, this is the weakest point of this bag for me. So essentially, like this tripod holder goes like this, and the tripod comes up here, and then you can stitch it back on, or like you can kind of hook it in here. It's just all a little bit fiddly, and when this is like this, it's impossible to sit down, as you can imagine. So what I do is I actually put some Velcro like uh, silencer here, and I just leave it like so, and actually you can put like a decent sized water bottle pocket right in here. So simple, easy hack for you folks that have this bag. There is a clamshell opening on the front here. Opens like so, you end up with two mesh pockets on the inside here where you can put your little meshy things like, um, I don't know, batteries or, or whatever. And then the camera cube is really nice in this guy. The padding, they've upgraded the padding on here and it feels just great. Like this is one of the beefiest camera cubes you can ever imagine. Now it doesn't close on itself. So this camera cube is one that like, is kind of hard to use in another bag, but I like it. One thing about this camera cube that's very cool, it's gonna be hard for me to show, is on the back here, there's actually a sleeve where you can act, where you could put your laptop if you wanted to, and your laptop would live right behind here. A very cool feature, and I actually use it in other bags sometimes if they don't have a laptop compartment. So, if you have this, you can do that. On the side, this side, there is a laptop compartment, uh, its own laptop compartment. Uh, it is suspended off the bottom, same waterproof material, no meshy stuff or anything like that, but really nice. On this side, there is an actual water bottle pocket that pops out from the side here. You can also use this pocket for like a passport or something like that. Mission Workshop is famous for having bags that are very comfortable. This bag is no different, it is extremely comfortable, and uh, I love it. The straps are beefy and like just the right amount of cush with I don't know, they're just wide enough and then just padded enough, really good. Uh, there is a luggage pass through here so your bag would sit upright on the luggage. Uh, all the hardware is very nice, top handle, really good. 
last thing I'm gonna talk about is that there's this archive rail system here on the front and you can take a pouch like this, access pouch, and you can slide it on down here and what you end up with is uh, an extra pouch on the front of your bag. Really cool, Mission Workshop. This is one of my favorite brands in uh, all of the world of bags. So, no surprise that I like this one. And the price obviously is a thing, but price be damned, it's an amazing bag. And I love it. And this multicam black just looks so badass. That's it for the medium bags. Oh, we've only got large and then my favorites to go. We're at like 50 minutes, so hopefully we can plow through these next ones and uh, you stay with me. So let's get into the large ones. This is the Ajna 37 liter bag from F-Stop. This is the first in the big bags. Um, it was a very interesting bag to me because on paper and feature wise is not something that looks like it would appeal to like my normal style, my normal aesthetic, my normal way of carry. But it actually worked out really well and I liked it a lot in the end. The more I used it, the more I liked it. It has a lot of features that kind of remind me of like the more typical like bag nerd, bag nerdia style bags that I'm used to carrying. One example of this would be the zipper pulls. So if you look at the zipper pulls here, they are these paracord with heat shrink, very akin to the Goruk that I showed you at the beginning of the video. That feature alone made using this bag feel very comfortable and kind of normal. Now, um, this bag is, I, I spoke to uh, a couple of people from F-Stop and basically they told me that they were, this is the next step in order to make a bag waterproof. They're going from like water resistant to waterproof. So they have this uh, Dura Diamond material. It is a kind of ripstop material that feels something similar to X-Pack, but X-Pack is a laminated material. This is actually just a, uh, a ripstop. I believe it's like a 300 something D ripstop. And then the under part of the material is uh, this kind of DWR coating really intense DWR coating that you can see here, uh, which makes this material very, very, very waterproof. In fact, um, I didn't have much of a chance to test that, but uh, it did perform well in, in my general test. Now, the bag overall, as I said, it's a little bit bigger than I normally would use. It has two very nice water bottle pockets. They're super stretchy. Uh, the material feels good. Uh, same thing on both sides. Behind that, there are two more pockets, which I actually use quite a bit. They're kind of like wing pockets. Uh, you can actually put a bottle or something in here. It goes all the way down to the bottom. Uh, you could even put something like a small travel tripod in there um, that might fit or just whatever you kind of need on the go. Now these zippers are also very interesting. Can you see that? These are like welded zippers that are proprietary to F-Stop. Um, I, I asked them about the brand of the zippers and, and they said they were proprietary zippers that they had made or developed together. Uh, with the manufacturer and they are very, very waterproof in fact, um, or at least they're not like submergible, but very waterproof. Uh, they're welded and they, uh, they have an IP rating, I believe of 60 something. Don't quote me on that. It's on the website, but it's a, it's a very, very water resistant zipper. Now, because of that, they are a little bit difficult to pull. They're not super, super smooth, but they're um, good enough. And I think that the bag kind of has a very good balance of those waterproof zippers and uh, more typical uh, YKK zippers, which you see uh, on this main back compartment. It's a number 10 YKK, teeth out, um, really nice, really smooth zipper that covers up this back panel here. This is where your camera cube would go. I actually have the camera cube next to me. I'll talk about that in a second. There is this hip belt. Hip belt was kind of, it's one of those things like it's great. It's really nice in use. Uh, it, it distributes the way well, there's an aluminum frame in this bag, but I wish I could stow it somewhere. Like I wish I could tuck it up into here or do something like that. Now I know the intended purpose of this bag is like an outdoor adventure thing, but for me personally, when I was trying to use it on a trip in a city, I'd like to get rid of that if possible. But eventually I just kind of forgot about it and it was fine. Hard to forget about it because they do use all of this metal hardware. Like the whole bag has metal hardware aside from this sternum strap and the metal hardware is like really intense. So um, you do hear it from time to time, you know, do like some of this, but uh, you kind of get used to that too. And it actually gives the bag a very nice quality when you use it. 
front of the bag, there's this zipper here. This kind of just goes into the uh, this kind of front stash pocket, which is something like this. And then there's another kind of organizer pocket inside that's very small, it goes like that. Nice zipper, all those things. This pocket goes all the way down to the bottom. Uh, this, this part here with the branding on it, there are, it hides the ice pick kind of loopy things which are also up here, not something I normally would use. You can put compression straps on the bag here and tighten it down. Uh, in the kit that I had, it came with those. I didn't actually use them very much because the bag kind of flops down itself in use and, and it, it was okay. The straps are small, they have a kind of look that makes them like thin. But they, or makes them look thin, but they were really comfortable, like surprisingly very comfortable. They use this kind of algae foam or something, and whatever it is, it definitely felt really comfortable in use. They're a little bit short, um, short as in like this part could dig into the under part of your arm if you're a taller guy, but it was really good for me. My wife also wore it and really liked it. Top of the bag, there is a lid pocket here with one of those welded zippers. Under the lid pocket, you just have one more detail pocket with two kind of microfiber things here. Probably good for filters or something. And then the rest of that pocket has a little bit of its own space. These zippers are actually kind of cool to use, but um, yeah. Uh, the main thing, this is my favorite interaction on this bag. So there is a number 10 YKK zipper under this flap here. And it just feels so good to kind of do that. And that gets you into the main compartment of the bag. Now this bag doesn't have a laptop sleeve. So what I did was I actually threw a laptop sleeve inside this hydration thing down here. And that worked out okay for me. It's not ideal. I kind of wish it had a real laptop sleeve because, well, a bag this size you'd expect it to. But that was okay. And this sleeve worked out just fine in there. You can put almost any sleeve in there. Probably like a 13, maybe 15 inch max. But I think a 13 is probably pushing it in this bag. Uh, there is one more detailed mesh pocket there. Mesh feels good. That's kind of it for that. Uh, one thing I will say is when the camera cube is in this bag, it has to go in through the top. So this is the camera cube. It's called the slope. And it essentially has to go into the bag this way. So you kind of jam it down into the top of the bag here, which means um, when you're using the bag, if you have to take it out, you have to take it out through the top too. So that's something to keep in mind if you have this bag. There is this back access to the camera cube, so if you open it up here and you can get directly into the camera cube, the camera cube would sit in that section there. Now if you can see, the aluminum frame is too big for this, you can't pull the camera cube out this direction, which could be annoying for some people, but um, the camera cube itself has like a, a kind of a good grab handle, so you could just pull it out if you... Um, yeah, I, I talked to the, the company about that too, and what they said essentially is like, if you use packing cubes and stuff, it's not too hard to get out. I kind of agree. I mean, it would be nice to be able to get it out this way, but I kind of get why it's impossible. Some detail pockets on this side, all magnets that work very well. I don't know if I'd ever use these, they're for memory cards. Another one of those welded zippers here that feels really intense, but good. And yeah, that's it for this bag. I think one cool thing about this bag is it would work, it worked well when I took it on a trip for just regular travel with no camera gear. It, Felt good, worked well, was really comfortable to carry. And uh, it would do well as a camera bag as well if you're an adventure kind of person. But yeah, overall, really nice bag. One of the biggest surprises for me. Comes in at around 500 of your hard earned dollars. This is a bag from Wandered and this bag is ginormous. It is the Wandered Fierne. I don't know how to say that word, but. So I was just trying to show you that I, I can actually speak Korean, but I cannot pronounce the name of this bag. Anyway, this is in Gobi Tan. I think it looks amazing in this. It's a 50 liter like adventure bag. And again, this is uh, this is just really cool. It's it's it comes in different harness sizes. This is the small one, the small medium. It was really comfortable for me. Like I thought it was very, very comfortable. There's this crazy, like really thick mesh back here. Huge, huge hip belt with like detailed pockets. There's like a pocket on this side and then uh, like a kind of meshy guy on this side. You can take this out, but it is, holy cow, it takes a lot of effort to take it out. So I'm not gonna show you myself taking it out. Uh, this bag is, is like really like, it, it works as a camera bag, but it can be just an adventure bag. It has three major points of access, so if we get into it um, 
huge number 10 YKK zipper here that's super smooth. So you get into the back and when you get into the back there is a laptop sleeve on this part here. Uh, it will take like up to your 15 inch laptop. It goes in there just fine. Now like for the f-stop like this is a 50 liter bag has a laptop compartment. I know that the bigger f-stop has one but like please laptop compartment would be nice. Nice. Uh, this is the pro camera cube I have in here. Um, I'm not going to take it out for you but actually Wandered makes some of the best camera cubes there are right now. Uh, they they feel they feel really good. Uh, this one is way too huge for like my normal carry. It's like it goes all the way up to here, but I think it fits in this bag really nice. Gives it a bit of shape, so that's why I have it in there at the moment. But you get the drift. Um, if I zip this up, I just want to show you that this bag has four handles. So there's a handle here, handle here, handle here, and handle here. When you're traveling nothing's better than having so many handles and similarly to that shimoda you can kind of transport the bag like back and forth like this although with this one since the clamshell opens this way it's not as easy anyway very comfortable get back to the front here i believe this is a 420d kind of like i think it's a mix of 420d and 600d there are aqua guard zippers on all of the locations that are like facing you or that are, are out to the elements. So there's an aqua guard zipper here on the front, but very smooth one. And inside here, there's like a water bladder sleeve, but you could put like a jacket or something in there. I really like the look of this. Like it just looks so cool. It's just such a cool looking bag. There are compression straps here, which you probably need for a gigantic bag like this. And on this side, you've got a, a really big kind of like water bottle pocket. So like the most, like the a giant water bottle will fit in there. Just so huge, you can use it for other stuff if you want. If I was traveling with it, I'd probably use it for, I don't know, like a pouch or something like that that I needed on the go. Another compression strap here on the top, and then some daisy chains here that you could use to attach things if that's what you want. On this side, you have two compression straps, nice hardware. Because of the cut of this pocket compared to bags like the um, the Provoke, something about this the cut of this pocket is just a lot smoother than the Provoke. Like I don't know if you can see that, but on the Provoke it's like kick, 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 kick. but look at this, it's like just so smooth and nice. It's the side access, and uh, the camera cube has a little cutout here where you can get into the side of it. Really nice. I mean, I don't normally, I don't think I would use that that much, but with this bag. I think that if I was traveling, I would just have my camera in this little section here and then that would be like, okay, my camera's here and I would just remember that it's always there. It's gonna be hard to show this, but on the top lid, I hope you can see that there is a pocket. Uh, the pocket is gigantic, as you might imagine, with a little key leash there. Most water, uh, most ma, wandered bags are like all black. I love the color of this Gobi Tan one. And then the liner ends up being Gobi Tan as well. There is a another number 10 YKK zipper here that goes all the way around and gets you into the main body of the bag. Now that camera cube is all the way up here. So that pro camera cube is huge. This liner pocket can be zipped out, so you can zip it out, and then this would just be one big, one big bucket. But in this configuration, um, it holds your stuff like away from the camera cube. I would probably zip it out if I was using it. And then there's a mesh pocket up here with a, a decent YKK zipper. And yeah, really good up there. That zipper is so smooth. It's not water guard, it's not aqua guard, which is kind of interesting for Wander, because I think every zipper they ever made is water is aqua guard, except for the one on this, and it makes it nicer to use. So this, but it has a gigantic um this like flappy cover thing, so that covers it up from most inclement weather or whatever. That is not all with this bag. That is not all. There is more. Under this flap, you'll see another zipper. And this zipper can open up like this. Now, it's a very zippery bag. Like, I, I just got confused there, like, with this zipper and this zipper. And I think that's one issue with this bag is that when I was using it, I took it on a short trip. I always felt like like I was kind of pulling on this zipper down here even though it wasn't the one that opened this flap. But not a big, big deal. Now this gets you into the main again. 
without the camera cube, which I took this on a trip without the camera cube, and uh, let me show you. So without the camera cube, without the camera cube, you end up with just like a big open space, your laptop's in the back here, and you can put like all your packing cubes, your clothes, whatever, uh, and then this is that top section there. The top section is interesting because they have a pocket, like a zipper here, you can get into it if you want from there. I, I honestly, what I did was I just took this out, but I mean, that's up to you kind of, depending on how you, how you're gonna work with the bag. The bag is floppy, as you can see, it's floppy, but just a really nice bag to use. Really good, Wandered, I, I like this bag a lot. Like, honestly, if you're in the market for one of the, like a 50 liter bag, I think this is $370. I would definitely be all over this. It's it's a really nice, comfortable, very good looking bag. Wandered Fierne. Fernway? Fernway? One of those things. Now, this one is similar to one we talked about like two hours ago at the beginning of the video. This is the Peter McKinnon 35 liter. We talked about the 25 liter. I'm gonna be honest and say, the Peter McKinnon bags of all of the bags in this video were the ones that really surprised me the most with how nice they were in person. How everything felt so well built, so well thought out. There's nothing about the Peter McKinnon bags that doesn't feel considered. And I, I it's, it really blew me away. And I use this bag um, on a trip uh, basically as these bags came in I would be like okay oh, I have to use it and I would go on a short trip I would use it I use this bag for a couple of days trip and it was it was like if I wasn't like a bag nerd and into like the mission workshop kind of bags this would be like my travel bag because it was just so nice to use let's talk about it so it's got this tarpaulin material there are all these like latching points here where you can hook things on now this is metal Peter McKinnon thing there which I think is a, a point of contention with this bag because uh, people scratch it but I think that kind of is okay it has the beefiest top handle I've ever seen just so beefy and nice it feels great side handles one here and one here now the side handles are not positioned like perfectly well like I mean they'd almost want to be here to get a good weight balance but they work in a pinch there is a, a bottom handle that does the exact same thing uh, there's a hip belt as you can see really nice super comfortable straps like when I was wearing this bag of all the bags I have like it just felt like a glove like really really nice there's a, a pass-through here you got the fly the flag pirate and uh, another handle here now this is good for um, hanging the bag so you use this use this handle to grab the bag this handle to hang the bag again great great straps nice load lifters and you can definitely um, there's a frame here so you can put the weight on your hips and it worked really nicely for that back to the front there's a quick access up here uh, these zippers again are zoom zippers I, I do wish I believe they were YKK on the uh, original Kickstarter version but this is a new version of it and it uh, they are zoom but they've been fine uh, this front pocket has two pockets like uh, so much of that boundary we looked at earlier it's kind of a magnet thing and uh, there's a very cool detail here, which is going to be very difficult to show you, but it says fly the flag. Very cool. I believe that's Peter McKinnon's deal. Of course, it stands up on its own extremely well. Nomadic bags, they've always been very good at that. This bag has uh, three major compartments. So if we get into it from the front here, there is a front compartment that opens like clamshell, like this. You have uh, two mesh pockets here, and then one big mesh pocket here that kind of holds it all together. Good for like packing your clothes. Uh, some detail pockets here with uh, a thing to hold, a compression strap to hold your clothes down. You can actually expand this pocket out. So as this pocket sits, it or as this bag sits, it's 35 liters, it gets up to like 45 or 40, I believe. 42? I don't know. It gets bigger. Uh, it unzips from both sides here and then this part gussets out. <coughs> I think this is where they intend you to put your clothes. Uh, because I don't have a ton of camera gear, I didn't do that. I put my clothes in the main, but... <coughs> Sorry. It would work for that. The zippers are lockable. Aqua Guard. Really nice pulls. Just really good overall. The laptop compartment. 
is over hither, over hither, goes here. This is the laptop compartment. Very nice, pad it, suspend it, all those things. Again, very zippery, kind of like the last bag. Gigantic, like the biggest, beefiest zippers I've ever seen. <coughs> um, they are Zoom and they're just so unbelievably big here. Before we get into that part, uh, this is the side access. <coughs> Again, I don't use the side access very often, but you can see it. It's a good uh, good time to see this. This Velcro, whatever they're using here as the loop, is just so, so cush, just so beautiful. This bag feels really nice. Like my, my wife, I, I ask my wife all the time, like which bags look the most expensive? And she immediately thought these nomadic bags were the most expensive aside from that very nice uh, Ona that's all leather. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you noticed that, but I've noticed that while I was using it, this particular zipper is not the smoothest. I'm sure it would break in, but um, it hasn't been the smoothest for me. One thing I like is that you don't have to move these straps out of the way. With the Tenba earlier, you had to move the straps out of the way to get at it. The F-stop just now, you had to move the straps out of the way to get at it. With this one, they are attached in such a way that you just unzip and you're in. Now, because this is so big, I'm gonna have to show you like this. So essentially what you end up with here is a lot of dividers. What I did was I took out all of this, had my camera stuff in the bottom here, uh, so I could get at it from, from that side part. And I just had all my clothes up here and all my tech pouches and whatever. Uh, this small bag earlier, the one that I showed you is actually made to fit here like perfectly. So that's great. Uh, if you have that pouch, I would definitely highly recommend get this with this because then you can leave this at the hotel and rock with this. These again, super beautiful, really nice. If you look at this side, you end up with a couple of zipped pockets here. And then this is uh, what I would say is a tablet compartment, but my 13 inch MacBook Air fit there perfectly. It goes down to about here. Uh, I actually didn't go into the laptop compartment at all. I just kept my laptop in here. But if you have a bigger laptop, you're gonna have to go on the other side. And then this would be for your tablet or whatever. This bag is really nice, like really nice. I would say the only issue I have with it is the zippers are a little bit uh, not super smooth. We've made it to the last bag. This is literally the last bag. And honestly, I saved one of the best for last. It surprised me making this video, but the large bags are the ones that kind of, that I liked the most. And all of them have amazing features like that Nomadic just now, the F-stop's really nice. And then of course the Wander is, is also beautiful. Now this is the Naya Evo Fjord 60. Now don't let that 60 scare you. This bag is more close to a 40 liter bag. Um, in this configuration and it has a lot of expandability uh, that I'll show you as we go. The coolest feature of this bag I think is the material. It is made of eco nile it's called eco nile which is eco nylon. This is 100% recycled material and I'm all about that and all for that and this company Naya Evo is very much considering the environment. They Everything they do is talking about how like, um, you know, we photograph the environment. We should also, you know, use products that are, are good for it. And, and I, I really take that. Luckily for them, the bag is also really, really nice. Um, I was super impressed using this bag. All the big bags were, were really good, but this one in particular was probably my, my favorite um, and one of my favorites in the whole video. So this is the Naya Evo Fjord 60. This bag, um, has a couple of cool party tricks. It is made by Naya Evo, who are based in Europe. I'm gonna start with the back panel here and then we'll move into the rest. There is a hip belt that I have removed. I took this on a trip recently, about uh, a week ago, and I didn't need the hip belt, so I took it off. I used it mostly in this configuration. All of the materials on this bag feel really, really good. They use metal like when they can. Uh, this is aluminum, I believe. Um, and the rest of the materials feel great. The straps are extremely comfortable. You can uh, adjust them on this kind of dolly system or this uh, this attachment system here. Um, I'll give you a better look at that. 
Uh, I have it on the medium setting here, which works fine for me. Nice load lifters, everything is contained. You can stick this strap in here to keep it contained. Uh, lots of attachment points, daisy chains. Everything is held together with uh, nice hardware like this, or nice, um, like, uh, what do you call that? I've gone crazy. I've been like doing this so long, I can't. Web keepers, so there are web keepers. Um, the only weak point, so I'm gonna talk a lot about this bag, and the only weak point I'm gonna say is the handles. The handles, they have like a Hypalon shrink wrap thing over just regular nylon. There are two of them, one on either side. Naivo, like later on, maybe just make a little bit of a beefier handle for this size of a bag because the straps are lovely, really nice. The, the, the foam just feels great. The handle is, it's, it's okay. I would say it's okay, but you know, it could be nicer. Before we get into the access, we can talk about the water bottle pockets. Great on this bag. They remind me a little bit of the Peak design, but in this material, they, they kind of, you completely forget they're there. And then uh, instead of having a, a lot of um, rubber, uh, sorry, instead of having a lot of elastic here, you can actually tighten them up with a, a little bit of webbing, which I, I think is very cool. Uh, and the roll top here, which I'll talk about in a minute, actually goes inside the pocket, but it attaches right at the top here, so it doesn't really get in the way of your big bottles. On the bottom here, there's a hole for water to get out and an ice pack, ice hook thing that pops out. One on either side, same bottle pocket over here. You can see the eco Nile thing here. A couple of attachment points here. You can put some compression straps to compress the bag down. I didn't really need it. I thought the bag kind of compressed itself. Like, look at that. It's just a really sleek looking bag. There is a front pocket here, which is about uh, this big, just for details, kind of quick access sort of deal. Um, really cool kind of aluminum zipper pulls. I think that's one of their main things along with this Y. This Y is made of Hypalon, so I think that when you lay the bag down, this Hypalon material won't get scratched up like the rest of the bag will. Very cool feature, I believe. I dig it. The front of this bag has, before we get into that pocket, these are German AquaGuard YKKs, and they are just the smoothest AquaGuard zippers I have ever felt. Like. I have a hard time going to any other AquaGuard after using these. They're just so friggin' smooth. I don't know. <laughs> Only time I've ever seen them in a bag. This is a, like a beaver panel, sort of like helmet thing that you can attach to the front. Uh, I obviously don't use it. That's why it's in here. This is, would be like your tech part. So I use this uh, a lot because for me, um, recently my wife and I and our child all had COVID at the same time and we were in grandma's house and I brought this bag and this became like my working station. So I had, there's this detailed pocket here with a couple of pockets here. I had like my phone, my charger in this side, zip it up and the pocket goes all the way down to the bottom. And then my laptop would be here. The laptop is suspended, it's padded, really nice pocket. Uh, there is a kind of a, a Velcro thing here, but I, I just put a silencer on it and shoved it down because it was a bit annoying. There's also a clip here or like a, a Velcro thing where you can put a water bladder, but you know, I'm not that style or I don't use that. On the sides here, you can see that actually these pockets will expand out. So you get an extra like four or five liters of space in this pocket if you need it. Uh, I didn't need it, so they were like that. That's one of the ways this bag expands. The second way this bag expands is this top part here, which uh, is like a roll top and it's 100% waterproof. What is very cool about this pocket is that when it's stuffed, this zipper will stay on the outside and on the top and you can just use it like another zippered pocket on the top. Really cool design, uh, really well thought out. Um, and it adds like another five or six liters at least, maybe more to the top here. And then when you're not using it, you just roll it down, clip it up like this. When I was at grandma's house for the uh, the COVID stuff, we actually used this for our dirty laundry. Laundry would be in the top pocket here. Don't buy this bag for me. It's okay, I'm not gonna sell it anyway. One of my favorite features in this bag, I mean, I've been talking a lot about my favorites, but a lot of favorites on this bag is the way it opens. So there is a, a zipper that goes like kind of horseshoe around the whole panel here. 
and I'm gonna try to show this to you as best I can. And the panel opens like this. So like that. Let me show you. So the panel opens like this. And it's really just a really nice, so there's still some baby stuff in there from the trip. This is a really nice way for it to open. Because it opens like this, you have full access. The camera cube is here. A great camera cube, by the way, which we'll talk about in a second. The frame is hiding behind here, and uh, it's just really good. There is a mesh pocket up here that hides the uh, the rain cover. I don't think you'd ever need it in a bag like this, but it's there if you do need it. There's a little key leash in there. The liner material feels really good. It's a kind of rip stop. See that? Everything about this bag feels like top-notch quality. There is a liner that zips in here that will separate uh, this camera cube part from the top. This is kind of a running theme in these big bags. The Wandered had it, the, um, the Shimoda had it, but um, I don't actually use it. It was, it's over there. I was using it for something else uh, because I just, the top of the camera cube is like, for me, like this is more than enough to separate things, but uh, you know, you can separate it if you need it. I love the way that opens. It's just, I don't know. The rest of them don't have that look. Really good design. Can see everything for travel this bag was amazing i just like left it uh there and and filleted open it was just great on the back like most of the bags here now there are no side access points here so if side access is a thing for you you're gonna have to look at the wandered in the big guys or the nomadic if that's kind of what goes there's a number 10 ykk again super super smooth and it opens clamshell here and uh, you got the camera cube. The camera cube in this thing is really nice. So, okay, so compared to the F-stop, I just took it out from the back. That's a big deal for me. Like the F-stop one, because it's stuck there, it makes it really hard. Like, you know, you'd have to take everything out to get out. Anyway, uh, you can actually zip this part off if you want, or you can leave it there and it becomes like a contained camera cube. I think this is one of the camera cubes I'm gonna end up using in a ton of bags going forward. It's called the RCI, you can see there. Uh, these are some compression straps that came with it. But anyway, uh, lots of padding here. You can kind of uh, do it how you want. What I like about this one too is you can actually take the padding off the sides and then fold it all together and it just becomes a flat thing. So you can keep this in your bag all flat and then, I don't know if I can show it to you, but like all of these side panels like just kind of collapse on themselves. It's just a really cool design. Anyway, I'm gonna take this again for uh, another jaunt next weekend. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm sure there are tons of details I missed about this bag, but long story short, it's really, really nice. It comes in at around, I believe, $500, which is a lot of money, but it's one of the bags in this video that's worth it. It's just so nice. Well, we're at the end of the video and I've put on a jacket because I started filming this video in August and it's... Well, it's like almost 2023. <laughs> no, that's just a joke. It's a little bit cold in the studio and I needed a bit of a break. So here we are filming the, the end. In this part of the video, I'm just gonna give you a rundown of what bags I would choose for particular types of photography or adventure. And that's a segue. First, I wanna talk about adventure. So if, if I was going on an adventure of sorts, I think I would take one of these two bags, the Wandered Ferne or the F-Stop Ajna. I decided to choose both of these because, well, their sizes vary enough that it really depends on what you're doing. They're both excellently built. They're both very highly water resistant, super comfortable harness systems. They both have a lot of access points and ways you can use them. I think if I was an adventure type photographer, um, which I, I'm not really, realistically. Uh, these are one of the bags I would choose. Now these can work for almost anything, but for those particular types of um, photography excursions, I think that these are, are the ones that I would probably go for. Now, that being said, there are other ones that are equally as good, but that do other things. So let's pull these out of the way. For travel, I would choose either of these guys. Now, the thing is, 
this Naya Evo could easily have been in the adventure section, but I think for me personally, this is going to be a bag I'm going to travel with going forward because I like it so much. Now I'm going to put this one on to the side. The Naya Evo has something that's super cool for travel and that's the expansion. So it expands from the top here and it also expands from the front. I think that's super useful when you travel. Um, it's not a roll top. Um, like properly it's only this kind of wet bag up here but that works so well in travel it has excellent water bottle pockets the zippers are to die for straps are very very comfortable it's easy to get in and one thing that I really really liked about this bag for travel is your laptop and everything is super super simple to get to so I think for me personally this bag really excels at that although it does tons of other things very very well the next one that I think is an excellent travel option is this Peter McKinnon uh, from Nomadic. And this is a 35 liter guy. This also expands. You're kind of uh, getting a, sensing a theme here. It extends from this gusset here that we talked about um, that you can unzip. The bag itself is built excellently. It has side handles and bottom handles, which I think make it an excellent travel bag. Harness system is super comfortable, very nicely built. And uh, this thing works great for that. Plus, because you can put that Peter McKinnon cube pack in here, it makes it an excellent choice for travel because you can carry this big sucker, get to the hotel, take out that guy, and you're rolling. This also works well for like professional photographers. And I think if I was a professional, well, I mean, I am a professional photographer, but if I was one that used big, big cameras, this is one of the ones I'd probably be rolling with. Talking about pros, like as in, not pros and cons, but professionals. That go, that leads me to this Peter McKinnon. Now, I think this Peter McKinnon works great for the pro photographer. It doesn't have a lot of space for like your extra stuff. It has like a laptop and a couple of other things, but mostly it's set up as a camera bag. And I think because of that, it works great for a pro because you get to where you're going. And I think this action, this action makes it very useful um, for a professional photographer. I know when I work, I like to work like this, having my bag wide open, working out of it. I don't really go into the bag from the side or something like that. I, I normally just fillet it open and I'm coming out of here. I think because these cubes, you can have like your one set up here, your one set up here. You can have like your, um, I don't know, like your flash gun set up here and then you can have, you know, because of these, I think it works great. My buddy's a pro and he uses this bag. When I say he's a pro, he's like a wedding photographer. And what he does, he has these two things and he has like four more of them. And depending on what he's doing, he just goes whoop, whoop, and then he's ready to go. And he said, that's why he uses this bag because it's so convenient that way. Also, I love that you don't have to flip these straps out of the way. I think like if I was working, I just want to get to it. And uh, that would make this bag a good one. Now I'm gonna put this Shimoda here. This Shimoda obviously could do some travel, it could do some adventure. And if you're like an adventure type pro, then I think this is my favorite choice for that type of application. There's a place for your filters, your water bottle pockets come out of the sides. The build quality is great. These pockets make it very useful um, for your phone or actually you can uh, attach like your mic setup and all this kind of stuff in here. Very, very cool, super comfortable. And it has one feature I think for me personally, as I'm working that makes it so, so useful. And that's the refrigerator door style opening with these two handles, because you can kind of go from point A to point B like this. When I was working out of this bag and I said, I don't do a whole lot of that, but when I was, and I used this one, that was so, so useful to just kind of tote it around like this. You get into your camera gear, flop this guy over, zip it up and you're rolling. I think this is a great bag for any pro or amateur, but, if you're like an adventure type pro, man, this thing is the bomb. We're gonna roll into the Urban, but I think the first bag from the Urban would also work great for a pro. This is the Mission Workshop Integer. Now, uh, for like Urban type photography, I think this guy works awesome. It has a great look. It actually works well for travel because you can expand this top here. It has a lot of quick access. Like you can get stuff into here. It has a clamshell opening, which, uh, you know, opens from this flap up in the front like this. You can stick your little fanny pack guy on there and roll with this guy if you want. This is a, an excellent bag for that. Also, very cool for your laptop or your laptop goes in really well. The aesthetic just works. 
Also, I think uh, for me personally, um, while I don't use the side access, I think that uh, this side access is probably uh, one of the better examples here. Um, it just seemed to line up very well and the way it works with the camera cube is great. So this is uh, one of my favorite in the sort of urban category and one of my favorite camera bags, period. This is the Ona Clifton and this is, a, I mean, it's hard to say my favorite, but it's probably my favorite camera bag I've ever used, period. I have my own version of this that I absolutely love and I've used for years and years. I love this bag to death. And in fact, I'll even show you that at this moment, it is currently packed with my actual gear for a workshop that I'm teaching tomorrow. And I, I love this bag. I, I carry it everywhere. It has excellent camera cubes. Build quality is great. The aesthetic works so well in Seoul where I am. And it's just a really, really nice bag. I love this thing to death. You're gonna have to pry it out of my cold and, well, I'm really cold now, but cold and dead hands. Love this bag. Love it. For urban guys, man, this is absolutely great. I heard it's on sale right now. Excellent, excellent, cool, cool bag. I'm just gonna leave this guy here because I love it so much, I wanna keep it in the frame. And at the beginning of the video, we talked about this GoRock. Now, I'm gonna give this guy an honorable mention as the best camera bag that's not a camera bag because obviously it's not a camera bag, but I think this bag works very well as a camera bag for somebody who doesn't want a camera bag. <laughs> but that being said, I think most of the bags in this video have shown me that if I'm really, really serious about my work, then the camera bag is, is most often has creature comforts that make them easier to use. And I, I really dig that. Although I do love this guy too. So I'm gonna end with the Ona on the table here because uh, it's all packed up with my stuff ready to go for tomorrow. And I hope this video was helpful. It's gonna be a monumental one to watch. Um, the editor is going to kill me, but it was a lot of fun to film. It was a lot of fun to prep for, and I very, very much enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, lots of love for all the gear here. Uh, lots of love to all the companies who, who reached out and sent us the gear to, to test out. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, yeah, with that being said, this is JT signing off. Carry on kids, bye bye.